Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the free wine course from the Waiters Academy. Once you finish this course, you will be able to talk with your guests freely about wine. You will be able to sell them wine to match a wine bottle with their food and most importantly, that's what will separate you from the rest of the pack. Everybody can carry plates. You being proficient about wine will make you the top waiter in your restaurant. Start making you really good money and start enjoying life. Coming up, lesson one. Green salad with French dressing. Thank you very much. And so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the wine course, lesson one. We are going to talk about what is wine, what are the wine characteristics and everything like that. We will be discussing mostly French and Italian wines during the course. But right now on lesson one, we are going to talk about the knowledge, the basic knowledge. This will be the groundwork of your further wine education. The lesson one is very simple, but very, very crucial if you want to learn wine. Because we are going to talk about wine characteristics mostly. And if you know the wine characteristics, talk about them, explain them, that's, that's going to be much easier to learn anything else about wine. <clears throat> so what is wine? Wine, of course, is an alcoholic beverage. Typically, it's made from grapes. But remember, it could be made from other foods. Uh, we as a waiters, and this course is especially for waiters, it's all about what waiters need to know about wine. Nothing else. So, as a waiters, we don't care about the fruit wines. We talk about only grapes wines, and that's what we care. Um, wine could be red, white, and rosé, and these have different levels of sugar, alcohol, tannin, acidity, and those are also some of the wine characteristics. The winemaking process. Harvesting the grapes is the year that we cut the grapes from the grapevine. All right, the most important thing about to remember about harvesting is that the year that we harvest the grapes is the year that you're going to have on the label of the wine bottle. It's not the year that we fill the bottles up, it's not in else, it's the year that we harvest. So, if we cut the grapes in 2021 and uh, we bottle the wine in 2023 and we start selling the wine in 2025, like it's going to be, for example, Barolo, the year on the bottle that we start selling in 2025 is going to be 2021, all right? So, remember that. Uh, the next process is destemming and crushing the grapes. Of course, we have to uh, remove the, the stems. And then, of course, we have to crush the grapes so we get juice. Uh, <clears throat> fermentation is the next process. And this is probably the crucial uh, moment of uh, winemaking because this is the moment when the sugar inside the grape juice is turned into uh, alcohol. And that's done by uh, a bacteria called yast. And um, many producers are choosing exactly what kind of yeast to use, uh, how long to leave the yeast in the juice, so how long it's going to be there to produce alcohol. So that's going to be uh, very important of, of how sweet the wine will be, how much sugar they will leave in the grape juice, and how much alcohol is going to be the wine, and all those kind of things that are really, really crucial to the uh, wine making process. Uh, so fermentation is the most important. Uh, part of that. Pumping over and temperature control uh, during the production of the alcohol from the sugar um, you know the pot is really warming up and it's very important to keep uh, the, the temperature under whatever degrees they decide uh, so it's doesn't, it doesn't kill the yeast and uh, doesn't damage the wine. Pumping over is done because we need 
the Jews to be in constant contact with the skin of the grape. Usually the juice is on the bottom, the skin is on the top, and we have to just keep pumping over because this is what makes the color of the wine. If the winemakers want the color to be really ruby red, they have to constantly pump over the juice and it stays in constant touch with the, with the skin and it gets darker and darker. <clears throat> All right. Uh, that's for the red wines, of course. For the rosé wines, uh, they remove the skin much uh, freer. And of course, for the white wines, uh, there is the different procedure. Pressing. Pressing is when we separate the juice from the must. And um, so you have the seeds, you have the skin, everything leaves in the tank. Uh, the juice is going through the small holes and... Um, and then, of course, we have to rack uh, the cans, this, this juice, because uh, no matter how small those holes in the pressing uh, are, there's still some leaves, some uh, skin, some broken seeds uh, in the juice. So we have to decant it, make sure that there is no uh, hard particles in it. The next process is aging. Depends on what kind of wine you're doing. Uh, some wines are aged just for like a couple of days or a couple of weeks. Some of them are aged for years. Uh, it depends on uh, what, uh, what is the wine that uh, the winemaker is producing and how they want to, to make it. You know, If you age in stainless steels, it's one thing. If you age in a, in a large or small oak barrels, it's going to be a completely different thing because the wine is going to take from the flavor of the oaks. And uh, it's going to taste differently. It's going to add some tannin to it and so on and so on. So aging is also one of the most important things, uh, one of the most important process in the, in the wine making. And uh, the last process, of course, is the filtration and bottling. Everything that's left in the juice, we need to filter that. Uh, we need to remove the yast, whatever it's left uh, from it. And uh, we have to put the real pure wine in the bottle. There are some bottle of wines that are not filtered they will have much more deposit much more uh, hard particles on the bottom of the bot of bottle so you have to be careful if you serve a bottle that's not filtered it's going to be labeled not filtered uh, and you have to be really careful with that and this is pretty much everything about the wine now handling and storing wines the winemakers know how to handle their bottle of wines or, bar or barrels or whatever. We are talking about how waiters should handle wine uh, in the restaurant, all right? Because uh, this also uh, could damage the wine or, you know, decrease the, the joy from consuming wine. If you're serving a sparkling wine, a little bit warm than it should be, then the experience of the guest is going to be completely different. So sparkling wines... And light body white wines, we always serve, you know, ice cold, three to seven degrees Celsius, ice cold. The white wines uh, and the rosé wines go between seven and 13 degrees, and the red wines, 13, 16 degrees Celsius. Some red wines, some really full body, heavy red wines could be uh, stored in uh, room temperature and served at room temperature. But you have to remember, the most important thing is that, that we, as a waiters, we do the right thing. This is the standard. But the guests that come to the restaurant, they have their own preferences. I have guests that uh, order full body wine and they want to be served at like 13 degrees, 14 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you have to chill that and so on. So uh, if the guest say, I don't drink my wine ice cold. Okay, don't put it in an ice bucket. Just put it on the table. And the gentleman will uh, figure out uh, when to drink it and so on so so the guests have their own preferences but we need to know as a restaurant uh, servers at what temperature we should, should serve our wines okay so um, <clears throat> now one of the most important things that uh, that is losing money at the restaurant is the open wines all right we serve every restaurant serve a bottle uh, open the bottle and serve it by the glass, all right? Then these bottles of wine, they stay open and they are stored not properly and they are damaged and then we just throw a lot of wine 
away and the restaurant is losing money so this is one of the crucial things uh, uh, being a food uh, server uh, being a waiter in a restaurant how to store the open wines all right and um, you can store a champagne but only with a wine stopper you know sparkling wine stopper you just the champagne bottle has to have a wine sparkling wine stopper at 100% of the time the only time that you don't you remove the stopper is when you put the wine immediately put it back and that's it and you store the champagne always in ice cold uh, ice bucket or then in the cool frame a cool shrunk it could last like that three days if you leave it during the service hours open now and then after the service hours you put the sparkling wine stopper and you put it in the cool shrunk and you think the next day you're gonna get a a, a real good uh, uh, bottle of champagne that's no sense it's gonna be gone because during those service hours if you open in it just for four or five hours a day this bottle is losing the, the bubbles so uh, the champagne bottle is going to be closed at all times um, the light white wines if they're stored properly always close with the uh, cork uh, in the cool shrunk they can last seven days the normal full body white wines they can last five days and the red wines I also store the red wines in the cool shrunk okay you can keep it in the dark cool place but in the restaurant we don't usually have those dark cool places so at the end of the night I close all the wines I put them in the cool shrunk the red wines I'm talking about and then on the next day I about two hours before we open for business I pull those bottles out I leave them in the room so they can warm up and pretty much get the perfect temperature for the for the service uh, those wines if they are keep close all the time with the cork and then of course stored in the cool shrunk you can keep them for five days and uh, yeah not storing and handling properly open bottles of wine uh, is a big big money losing for the restaurant And now we get to the most important part of the lesson one wine characteristics guys i really telling you learn the wine characteristics very carefully make sure you know everything about tannin acidity sugars also because this will be your you know basis of of learning everything else without knowing the wine characteristics nothing else will be possible to learn about wine <coughs> All right now body of wine the body you know lately everybody's talking about the body that the, 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 the wine has 14 percent alcohol it's a full body that's a nonsense all right alcohol of course affect the body of the wine but it's not just alcohol that's so many things uh, the body characteristic is actually the most difficult to understand but it's the most important to understand because most of the time when you're talking about wine with your guests the body is going to be the first thing that they will they will ask you know so um the body is yes affected by the uh, alcohol percentage in the in the bottle but also is affected by the acidity by the tannin by the sugar so body is like that alcohol levels the more alcohol the more body acidity the more acidity less body tannin increases the body of the wine then the sweetness the sweetness means there are more sugar in the wine more sugar means more body uh, then of course with the the wine in in oak barrels with age in oak barrels if that's the case of course that adds to the body of the wine then carbonation carbonation takes off the body because you have bubbles inside mostly uh, that's air so of course that means less body but the body characteristic that's a complex thing and you have to really understand that uh, that that's the fruitness of the wine the intensity of the flavors you know all those things affect the body of the wine and uh, in being able to talk about it and explain is is crucial 
so make sure that you understand uh, how body works now we are uh, giving you a list of the grapes that create you know light body wines like Gamay, Zweigel, Pinot Noir, Bopolicella, Carignan, Blau, Frankish and then we go down and it's getting grapes with more body Barbera, Grenache, Merlot, Montepulciano, Nebbiolo, Negro Amaro and then it goes really heavy now you know Tempranillo, Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec and on the bottom is Shiraz, Zinfandel so those wines, those grapes are giving really full body wines because they have they have everything you know like like really um complex wines with a lot of tannin with a lot of uh, you know not so much acidity maybe uh, less acidity uh, uh because the acidity affects the wine the body actually you know different um yeah you can see here pinot noir is a wine that has a lot of acidity and that's why it's a light body wine not just only because of the city but, but because of uh, that also um, now the wine making process can change that you know you can have Pinot Noir that is really full body wine really full heavy body wine because it was aged because of the wine making process and so on so but in general you know those grapes here on the top they give really light body wines then here you have medium, then you have heavy and really heavy stuff. Pinotage, Petit Verdot, Shiraz, Infantil. It's very important to know that because once you see the bottle and you see, oh, inside is a Zweigelt, okay? If it was not aged, that means it's going to be a really fruity, light body wine. And you can sell it to your guests like a real fruity, light body wine. You don't need to know much about the winemaker and all and all. As long as you know that this was not aged and this is a Zweigelt or Pinot Noir, you know. So, very, very important list to know. The next characteristic is tannin. <clears throat> now, a lot of people don't like tannin in the wines. Uh, they say it uh, makes the wine bitter. Yes, um, that is uh, kind of true. But without tannin, uh, one really full body, uh, heavy red wine is nothing. All right. Plus, the tannin gives the health benefits of uh, wine. So everybody that drinks a glass of uh, red uh, wine uh, once a day, um, the health benefits come from the tannin in this wine. Uh, there are different kind of tannins. Usually the tannin comes from the grapes, for the skin grapes. But of course, as I said, if you age the wine in a wooden like oak barrels, it comes from also from the aging from the barrels from the oak and uh, so on so you will uh, read the the article in full um, and you will understand wine list for grapes with light tannin then medium tannin and then heavy tannin and then really heavy tannin so if you see for example pinot noir okay pinot noir there is no tannin all right, Valpolicella, the same way. But, as I said, the wine making process can change that because from Valpolicella, we are producing, for example, the Amarone de Valpolicella, okay? And that's really full body heavy wine because it's aged, because it's made of partially dry grapes and so on. So, so you have a lot of sugar inside, you have a lot of, a lot of body, a lot of, a lot of things, beautiful wine, okay? so make sure that you understand that guys those grapes here you know they give real light tannin wines but if the winemaker decides to to add tannin to this wine and make it really full body and so on, so they can do that because of the wine making process um yeah Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Cabernet Sauvignon, Montepulciano, those are already some really uh, heavy on tannin wines. Then you go to really heavy stuff like Sangiovese, Tempranillo, Zinfandel, Nebbiolo, really heavy. And then Petit Verdot, Chirac, uh, Porte and Tannin, of course, that's uh, over the board. Um, tannin is good for the red wines when it's balanced. When the tannin is overwhelming test of the wine, the guests will not like it. So when you're testing wine, make sure that you understand that. You know, you test the tannin, 
but if it's well balanced with the acidity, with the fruitiness, with the uh, sweetness, then then the wine is good. The tannin is good. And when you test the wine, and all you test is the tannin, and it dries your uh, tongue and, and your mouth, uh, then yeah, maybe you should not sell this wine to people that don't like uh, tannin. It's the same thing with acidity, guys. Acidity gives the sour taste in the wines. Um, but without acidity, the wine loses its freshness, you know, and it's flat. So acidity is very important to have in the wine as long as it's not overwhelming taste in the, in the bottle. Um, in the same way, you know, there are a lot of ladies that I'll ask you if uh, there is acidity in the wine. You should uh, always, you know, make a difference. Yes, there is acidity, but it's balanced and it's very fine. And it's very pleasant acidity and uh, yeah if it's not if it's overwhelming then uh, maybe you should not sell this bottle of wine to those ladies um, there are different types of acids in the wine those are the types of that give the wine this this special like you you will hear a lot of people that test wine and say oh did you test the green apple you know and uh, or did you test the, the citrus uh, fruit uh, in the wine? You know, because um, the wine might have malic acids and that gives the, the apples, you know, the apple test in the in the wine or citric acids and then gives you the citrus fruit in the in the wine. Tartaric acids, that's the bananas, you know, like m more mild, more, more, more easy um, acids. So um, with time, testing more and more wine, you will be able to distinguish those different types of acids in the wine and you will be able to talk about them to your guests. And if you're not drinking wine, make sure that you ask your guests all the time if they if they feel the apples, you know, if they feel the citrus fruits inside. And, and that's how you're gonna make your own um, impressions because if you don't drink wine, of course, there is no other way. You should have to, you should just talk to the people. Now, there's like, uh, a scale of uh, acidity, you know, sweet wines have more acidity, um, light body white wines, white wines in general have more acidity, uh, full body red wines have less acidity, but um, you should understand that the, the acidity is very uh, uh, difficult to, um, because a lot of people have more they like acidity and they can take more and there are some people that don't like it and they just really hate it um, and you when you're talking with your guests about wine make sure you clear that uh, so you don't sell you don't suggest a bottle of wine that uh, they really will hate and uh, don't want to drink and uh, you create your problems and problems for them too sweetness uh, it's clear we don't need to discuss that too much uh, if there are more sugar in the wine, of course, it's going to be a sweeter. Um, the only thing maybe we should uh, mention here is about uh, sparkling wine. You know, in the champagne, uh, we add sugar in the champagne. And that's why on the labels, you're going to have all those uh, terms, you know, brut nature, extra brut, brut, extra dry, dry, demi sec, and uh, juice. And this means exactly how much sugar is in the in the champagne if it's a brut nature that means there was not sugar added it's up to three grams in liter extra brut it was a little bit of sugar added six gram per liter and so on so on so if you have dupes that means it's a sweet champagne then it's like it's a mi medium so uh, make sure that you know what those terms mean and you don't sell to your guests a sweet champagne if they want to dry or brut or whatever and this is all about wine characteristics. We're not discussing alcohol. We're not discussing fruitiness uh, because those are, uh, you know, those are also characteristics of the wine, you know, and they affect the body and everything like that. But alcohol, it's pretty clear. Uh, you uh, have more alcohol, uh, then the wine is going to be uh, more body. Less alcohol is going to be less body. Um, and uh, fruitiness, we will discuss. Uh, further when we are discussing all the different type 
grapes of grapes and wine guys don't forget the way academy uh, has uh, another course free online this is the weighted training course where you're gonna learn all the skills you need to be a top waiter in the world uh, it's free take advantage of it and of course the waiters network offers you every single day a new job um, we are posting jobs from every uh, country in the world top resorts top restaurants so make sure you check that sign up create your profile give a chance to those companies to look into your profile if they like what they see they can call you they offer you a job on the spot uh, so that's that's beautiful why you're sleeping somebody is looking at your profile and decided uh, you are worth it and they want to hire you uh, take advantage of that guys all right I'll go to test one and uh, good luck with that i will see you for lesson two ciao guys take care green salad with french dressing thank you very much